Now look, I know that you need to have a passport for yourself when you travel, and sometimes even for a pet. But I would never have believed that you'd ever need one for a battery. But yes indeed, the battery passport is now a thing. This latest madness comes from, where else, the European Union, which, on the one hand, wants to ban all internal combustion engine cars by a week next Tuesday, but on the other decides to tie up lithium-ion batteries in miles and miles of regulatory red tape. This is cognitive dissonance of the highest order. As we shall see in this video, the proposed scale and reach of these regulations is quite staggering and will not only bog down the automotive industry, but any other businesses that use even fairly small lithium-ion batteries. This will certainly keep many thousands of bureaucrats busy in Brussels for many years to come. Welcome back to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer turned Sydney YouTuber. Be sure to like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell and drop a comment down below. This from Autocar. Electric vehicles will need battery passports to enter EU from 2027. A digital document will detail provenance, state of health and more. Battery passports will be mandatory for electric vehicles sold in the European Union from February 2027 to provide greater visibility of what has gone into them and where it has come from. The digital documents will be linked to the VIN and a QR code that, when scanned with a digital device, will reveal detailed information about the sources and nature of the raw materials prior to manufacturing, along with post-manufacturing details such as capacity and condition. These last two are probably the most far-reaching and difficult part of the whole scheme, in that the passport doesn't just apply to what happened when the battery was made, but things like capacity and condition, which will need to be updated in the passport as they change over the lifetime of the battery. The move is part of the new EU battery regulation, which requires the battery or vehicle manufacturer, depending on who produced the battery, to disclose the carbon emissions from production and gradually include greater proportions of recycled materials in the run-up to 2035, when the EU will ban sales of new ICE cars. A little digging into the legislation and it seems the passport will be required not only for EV batteries, but also for any industrial batteries with a capacity greater than 2 kilowatt hours, which is a pretty small limit given most EVs are of the order of tens of kilowatt hours. Here's the list of information that must be included in the passport. Battery model information. Point 1. Publicly accessible. A. Information of Part A Annex 6. B. Material composition. C. Carbon footprint of Articles 7 brackets 1 and 2. D. Information of the due diligence report of Article 52 brackets 3. E. Recycled content as in documentation in Article 8 brackets 1. F. Renewable content. G and H. Capacity and voltages. I. Power capability. J. K. Battery lifetime information. L. Temperature range. N. Round trip energy efficiency. O. Internal resistance. Q. Labelling requirements of Articles 13 brackets 3 and 4. R. EU declaration of conformity of Article 18. S. Waste batteries information of Article 74 brackets 1A to F. Point 2. Accessible to persons with a legitimate interest and the Commission. A. Detailed composition. B. Part numbers and contact details of sources for spare parts. C. Dismantling information. D. Safety measures. Point 3. Accessible to notified bodies, market surveillance authorities and the Commission. A. Result of test report proving compliance. And then on the individual battery itself. Individual battery information. Point 4. Accessible to persons with a legitimate interest. A. Performance and durability parameters of Article 10 brackets 1. B. State of health information of Article 14. C. Status of the battery. D. Information and data as a result of its use. The first of these, performance and durability parameters, then goes into another rabbit hole of requirements. Part A. Parameters related to the electrochemical performance and durability. 1. Rated capacity in amp hours and capacity fade in percent. 2. Power in watts and power fade in percent. 3. Internal resistance in ohms and internal resistance increase in percent. 4. Where applicable energy round trip efficiency and its fade in percent. 5. An indication of their expected lifetime under the conditions for which they have been designed in terms of cycles and calendar years. Part B. Elements for explanation of the measurements made for parameters listed in Part A. 1. Applied discharge rate and charge rate. 2. Ratio between nominal battery power watts and battery energy watt hours. 
3. Depth of discharge in the cycle life test. 4. Power capability at 80% and 20% state of charge. 5. Any calculations performed with the measured parameters, if applicable. And D. Information and data regarding use is similarly further defined. Number of charging and discharging cycles. Negative events such as accidents. Periodically recorded information on the operating environmental conditions including temperature and state of charge. Note that it requires a record of negative events such as accidents to track the safety of the battery and operating temperatures recorded periodically. It's an absolute minefield. And as I mentioned before, given all of this information is specific to the individual battery, it will need to be kept updated as the battery ages. The scale and impact of these regulations is apparent simply by looking at the documents. The executive summary is 57 pages. That's just the executive summary. The actual guidelines are no less than 200 pages long. Compliance is not going to be a simple process by any means. I will leave links down below in case you are ever having trouble getting to sleep one night. The intention behind the regulation is reasonable, as the EU is particularly concerned about supply chain for the various elements included in these batteries, and whether they are from a legitimate source or from dangerous and unregulated mining in Africa. But it also shows that lithium-ion batteries are so unstable and so unpredictable that the EU believes that this kind of information is required to avoid the adverse consequences of a poorly maintained or damaged battery. As a result, this regulation, as with anything the EU touches, is wrapped up in miles and miles of red tape, which will keep the lawyers and the bureaucrats very happy, but will do nothing for the poor consumer except make EVs even more expensive than they are already. That's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think. If you have any tips or stories, you can hit me up on Twitter, email or by Instagram. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.